G'day, I'm Josh. This is the longest and wildest my hair's ever been. I'm Phoebe, and I have an irrational fear of worms getting into my feet through mud. And you already know who it is. It's Sonia the Beardy. And this is our Adams 35, our floating home in a bloom. We've dropped the pick in the gorgeous waters of North Stradbroke Island, the most picturesque anchorage for us so far. We've got a couple of days of winds that you'd be disappointed to fly a kite in, but lucky for us, we've got more important business. We're blowing the dust off our snorkels, getting our pasty white bodies in the sunshine, and getting our first taste of exploring the clear-ish waters of Queensland. All my youth was spent racing skateboards, so an upgrade to an electric workhorse for the boat was a no-brainer. This thing goes up to 33 kilometers an hour and is completely charged off our solar. Yahoo! So, while Josh went on his own mission to the dive shop, I took advantage of having absolutely nowhere to be and explore the town in my own time. I stumbled across an op shop that I have no doubt is the jewel of North Stradbroke. Think of any object, it'll be in here. The dog you had as a kid that your mum said went to live at a farm, I'm sure he'll be in here too. Your other sock, the lost city of Atlantis, it's here. If Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory freaked you out as a kid, this place is not for you. This shop felt like every fever dream that I'd ever had. The entities of my childhood nightmares all in one very small place. The trinkets and toys that humans collect throughout a lifetime, decades of collections, thousands of memories attached to every object that had now found its way here to create new memories for other humans. What better way is there to learn about a community than visiting its local op shop? And with that, done it, you've been fun, but we best skedaddle. We're on our way up to Amity Point. glass out right now. I am blown away by these scenes of Morden Bay with not a ripple of wind on it. It's just unbelievable. We're motoring up to Amity, obviously because there's no wind, uh, and just trying to get the last of the outgoing tide to be able to get to where we're going because once the tide turns and starts pushing back in, we won't be motoring against it. So, and we kind of missed the tide a little bit we were having too much fun in Cleveland. No, Dunwich. We possibly missed the tides a little bit, but we're still getting the last of the outgoing and then we'll get the first 12th of the incoming, which won't be too strong a tidal flow, but there are places that we can anchor regardless. So yeah, just get as far as we can. So when high tide hits the Savo, we could go for a swim. That's the northernmost tip of Stratty, North Stratty that is. It's called Amity. And we're gonna anchor over near there. The initial plan was to go and anchor over in the shoals uh, between Stratty and Morden, but we're gonna do that tomorrow. We'll just suss it out here tonight and find a nice safe spot and then go over there when we've got the full day to, to test swinging off like change of tide on the anchor rather than it being dark and stuff because there's not much room for error there. There's a bar just up ahead as well. So it's been a pretty incredible little motor up here. Phoebe and I both looked at each other and said, this is the most beautiful thing we've seen yet. Uh, just glass off conditions, unbelievable. Phoebe found a new position to have a little snooze in the boat. It's down here, only for a, a 10 minutes or so. Like that, yep, which looked pretty good. Sonia licked the helm and then, oh, see you later. Sonia, Sonia licked the helm and then her tongue got caught on the helm as, it, it as like I was. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, let's go anchor over here and get in this water. So Phoebe and I are just about to go for an expedition. We've just refueled the tender and we're gonna go check out a shipwreck and then get as close to the bar as we can safely. It's glass out conditions. The tide is slack, uh, it's the bottom of the tide, so clarity might not be so good, but we're still gonna get in there.
As much as we make ourselves sick with how much we love each other, it's also vital for our relationship living in a small space together to have our own experiences apart. I really like to bushwalk alone, and Josh, you guessed it, went fishing. Stratty dugong. I didn't want to chase it too much with the outboard and I wasn't ready to jump overboard and dive with it, but yeah, far out. I really hope that I get an opportunity to get some beautiful shots because they are, they're just incredible. I've never seen anything like them before. So prehistoric. I'm just exploring these sand flats. I'm looking for a good place to go for a snorkel. The tide's dropping. Um, I can't swim in too deep of water because I'll probably get carried away a little bit. So yeah, I'm going to anchor up the tender on a sand flat and then find some find some places to swim. Yo! Anchors out. As I was motoring across these sand flats, there were big schools of large fish that darted back into the mangrove. So I'm going to try and have a little snorkel and see exactly what they are. There's a lot of activity around here. This is actually where I was fishing this morning as well. So. It's kind of nice to be able to jump in and get an idea of what sort of environment it is under there and why fish were liking that so that when we go other places I can try and have a bit of a better understanding of the, the habitat and what might be there. We're heading over for sundowners with our friends Al and Danielle on their Fusion 40 Cruise and Hughes. Beer or a soda water? Cheers! 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 between our full-time jobs and all the necessary boat work. Tucked up in our cozy saloon of an evening together, listening to the pitter-patter of rain, our dream of actually cruising seemed so distant and out of reach. Our only reminder being the vacant berth next to us. It served as the best encouragement to keep working towards our dreams. Having people we knew doing it, the stories and photos we would get when Cruising Hughes would return kept the imagination ignited and the dream in sight. So sharing our first anchorage together as full-time cruisers at the beginning of our own adventure heading north was a pinch me moment. Something I'm sure you can imagine cemented the reality of us actually making it. What a morning. Where's the moon? There it is. <laughs> so what are we doing today, babe? We're leaving Amity Point and heading back down south. We're going to go towards Russell Island and anchor there because tomorrow night there'll be 20 knot westerlies again. So we really want to get out of here because we'd be on a lee shore if we were stuck here with the westerlies. Plus all the chop that builds up in Morden Bay is really unpleasant to sail with. So we're moving on. <laughs> and really for the reason that we're going to be going back to Horizon Shores to get our rigging and then we're going to take it to go get it swaged, go back to Horizon Shores, get it fitted and then bugger off north. Finally. Yeah. <laughs> Safely. Ideally. Anchor's up and we're on our way. Woo! Yay! <laughs> 
I was so nervous that we we're gonna get an anchor snag here and it's the deepest we've ever anchored, so. Uh, but we're all good! Woo! The whole reason we're leaving today was because <laughs> I was like, oh, we're gonna go early in my morning to get away from the winds. And we had a look and we're like, oh, we could probably stay another day. We may as well go. And they're like, oh, we don't want to have a late one because we're, we're leaving early. And here we are, slept before them. <laughs> Wake up, ow! <laughs> That's good, we got some wind this morning. Too bad it's coming from the direction that we're going in. <laughs> Lost it. Oh, babe. Oh, that sucks. I'm sorry. So we've since learned that the fish Josh was trying to describe is a pelagic fish. They inhabit the pelagic zone of the ocean, being neither close to the bottom nor near the shore. Every direction we turn today, somehow we had the wind over our bow. So no good for sailing because it's basically the only point of sail that you can't sail into you can never sail into the wind it has to be some sort of degree to the wind outside of 40 degrees either side uh, otherwise the forces won't be acting on the boat that will create the drive to push you through the water so we're motoring again for us in Morton Bay it's been motor and bay because there has been no sailing but that's all right especially seeing as we've got a rig that needs a little bit of work so that's another good thing to kind of make us feel better about it but yeah it's also good to wear the stuffing box in and to be frank I don't really mind motoring this motor still only has 600 hours on it so gotta break it in get that Yanmar going with our time in the Great Barrier becoming closer than ever before Josh took every opportunity to improve his fishing I just caught a mud crab that's a huge mud crab what the heck? <laughs> no way, bro! Look at how he caught it! What? No way, bro! <laughs> I-I don't know how you're bloody doing that to yourself. You had the road, that was not- had nothing to do with me. Ah, Come on, man. Jeez, fuck, I don't want to be pinched by them. Oh God. Oh my God. Let's see if I can get another mud crab. <laughs> I'm struggling at the moment to find a balance between work, play, fun, jobs. But right now I'm fixing up a few split pins on our chain plates on the deck that the stays are fixed to that come down from the mast so a few of the well pretty much every single split pin isn't split correctly nor is it fully seated in its hole so i'm just going through and punching them down a little bit further and then splitting them properly uh, they, are, they are pretty loaded up so they won't come undone but it was a suggestion from our rigger to get them all fixed up so good little project for me get reinvigorated now this is what this is what they look like at the moment that tapered head should be fixed all the way down through that that hole and the long leg should be bent up and around so i'm going through punching them back down and getting them seated properly so here's another example not fully inserted and not even split fully inserted but not split so that needs to come down and then that long leg needs to be bent around
So now that's got a, a positive lock there. It can't lift up unless that's bent down. Some people do bend that extra leg around, but I've been told that it's not necessary. So make it easy for us to pull them out. Watch, watch out for the sinking vine. Watch out, you're gonna fall. You've got to put your back into it. I will not put my back in here. My legs are only. I'm worried about it. The worm got pulling him out. You're right. <laughs> Get your ass out. You can put fear, put fear out of your mind. You can't operate under high function if you're scared. Josh's longest friendship is with his childhood mate Oliver, and his parents Donna and Martin gifted Josh his first bird watching book. And with both of us, for whatever reason, having ring of fire stuck in our heads, we thought what better way to shake Johnny off than to go bird watching through the mangroves of Russell Island. There'll only be probably about 60 seconds of bird watching footage because that's approximately how long we were out here for. The midges are fucking hectic. Josh is dragging the tender back. He dragged it all the way up there because he thought we'd be here for a lot longer than what we were. <laughs> Look how deep in the mud he is. <laughs> Splendor in the grass, 2022, yeah! Oh! That ring of fire, that ring of fire. <laughs> oh, it's like, when will it end? Burning ring of fire. Well, the Westerlies arrived that we were intending to dodge up at North Stradbroke at Amity. Uh, we're pretty well protected where we are here. It's nice, but it's bloody cold. Where Wesley's have brought really cool temperatures, strong winds, but beautiful clear days. So luckily we'll be able to sail back down the horizon today when we go down. It'll be good to get the sails up and yeah, just enjoy it. It's probably about, it was blowing up to 20 knots last night. We had a big storm north of us and a big storm south of us with lightning and big clouds but nothing here apart from just a lot of wind not even any rain to wash the deck off but I'm about to race over and pump some yummies on the tiny last bit of sandbag that's exposed before the tide goes high good to want to have a sail here but as you can see a lot of the passage would be behind some hills and trees that would impede a lot of wind so you'd be motoring anyway at least that's what I'm telling myself <laughs> nice to have the sails up but Phoebe's not feeling so well today so single handing and just yeah for an hour's sail it's just too much work <laughs> come at me roller furler please just trying to find a place to anchor right out the front of Horizon Shores and there are crab pots everywhere. Everywhere you look, everywhere you don't look. Some are on floats, some are on fenders that have sunk down and they're only just peeking above the waterline. It's shocking. It's a good um, place to get your prop wrapped up, but I'm gonna try to find somewhere that's not, not there. <laughs> See how we go. Bye, baby. Bye, my love. So we've anchored just off Horizon Shores. It's beautiful sunset. I'm going to go see Darren the rigger now, drop off some rubbish, and maybe pick up our stays so we can figure out when and where we're going to get them swaged and when we can get them on the boat. It's so bloody good to see you here. Thanks for hanging out with us, and we'll... See you again next week as we don't head any further south. It's all northward bound from here. <laughs> Doodles. Bye.